Well, as I said on Sunday when I began the Gospel of Luke, it contains some of Jesus' best-known parables. And perhaps the best-known is the parable of the Good Samaritan. Uh, that story is so well known that the phrase, when you just hear it on the news, about someone being a Good Samaritan, everybody instantly knows what that means. It means somebody went to the assistance of a stranger, even possibly at personal risk to themselves. The story begins, it's found in Luke chapter 10 and verses 25 to 37, when a lawyer comes to test Jesus and ask, you know, what's the, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, basically, well, you're a lawyer. What does it say in the law? And the man correctly answers, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He even connects those two things, as Jesus does in his teaching. And Jesus says to him, you've given the right answer, do this and you will live. And that's the leverage point, the first leverage point in this great story. It's not enough to be able to quote scripture. We know from elsewhere in the Bible, even the devil can quote scripture. Just because somebody can quote scripture doesn't mean they're a Christian, doesn't mean they're worth listening to. Because Satan can do it. And even demons believe in God. What Satan and demons don't do is they don't obey God. They don't live in obedience and faithfulness and service to God. And so that guy who had the right answer, wanting to justify himself, said, And who is my neighbor? Here he is trying to narrow down, well, how many people do I actually have to love? How many people do I actually have to be nice or kind or merciful to? So Jesus tells, again, the tremendous story. Uh, if we were going to contemporize it a little bit, we might say instead of a priest and a Levite going down the road, that you know, first a Baptist pastor went down the road and passed by on the other side, and then a Baptist deacon went down the road and passed by on the other side. and you know, Then fill in the blank, who would you say? Who would be the least likely person you would name? For some of us, it might even, we might even have to say, well, then a, a Muslim went by and saw a man beaten and lying on the side of the road. How does that sound to your ears? You have to get that kind of sense because when Jesus says it's a Samaritan <clears throat> who his fellow Jews regarded as dogs and far less than themselves, that's where the shock of the story really is. The person you would least expect, you know, someone from the opposite political party for some of you, uh, that that's the person who comes and shows mercy and generosity and compassion. And when Jesus says at the end of that story, and who was the one was a neighbor to this man who fell among the robbers, his fellow Jewish person couldn't even bring himself to say the Samaritan. And so he spit slowly out of his mouth the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus says, go and do likewise. God, do we need more merciful people in our communities, in our country, and in the world. And if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you are called to be a person of mercy who does mercy every day of your life.